let's assume you have a random number x that has the normal distribution. We write it like this here which means x is normal distributed. mu is then called the expectation of the normal distribution and sigma squared is called the variance of the normal distribution. The normal distribution is pretty famous and defined by using a so-called probability density function. So this here is the probability density function. So f of x is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2 pi sigma squared times the exponential function of minus x minus mu squared divided by 2 times sigma squared. And as you can see, the probability density function depends on the expectation mu and the variance sigma squared. The probability that the random number x is smaller or equal a real number small x, which you can see here, is then given by the integral from minus infinity to small x of this density function f. So the probability that x is smaller or equal small x is given by this integral here. And the function f is the density function we have defined here. It's easier to explain all this by using a picture. The density function f, which you can also see here again, this is the density function, describes a so-called bell curve. So the bell curve, or the function f, looks like this here. So I have plotted this function f for mu is equal to 1 and sigma is equal to 0 0.5. So I have inserted mu is equal 1 here and sigma squared um, is uh, 0 0.5 squared and have plotted this fun function here in this picture here. For the probability, we now have to calculate an integral of this bell curve, which you can see here. So the probability that x is smaller or equal to small x is this integral of this function here. Which means that the probability is actually the area under the bell curve. So because the int an integral calculates an area under the function, this probability is just the area under the bell curve. So the probability that x is smaller or equal small x is this area here where small x is here. By the way, the expectation u describes where exactly the maximum of the bell curve is situated. For example, if you made this expectation mu larger, the bell curve f would be situated more on the right, or better the maximum of this bell curve would be more on the right. If you made it smaller, the maximum would be more on the left. And the variance sigma describes how wide this bell curve is. So the variance sigma describes how wide the bell curve is. Which means if you made this sigma larger, the curve would become wider. And which you can also see here, the curve f is symmetric around mu. Ok, now that we know how the normal distribution looks like, we will now do the following thing with the random variable x. So we assume the random variable x has the normal distribution. We will now define a new random variable y the following way. y is equal to a times x plus b, 
where a is a non-zero real number and x has the normal distribution. The question now is, what distribution has the new random variable y, which is ax plus b, when x has the normal distribution? The answer is pretty simple. The new variable y, which is ax plus b, has the normal distribution too. Its expectation is given by a times mu plus b and its variance is given by a squared times sigma squared. This result or this rule is pretty important, so I've put a box around it. So, once again, if y is defined the following way, where x has the normal distribution, that this new variable y has the normal distribution too, and the expectation is given by this number here and the variance by that number. We will see soon why this rule here is extremely helpful. But first, let's talk about the standard normal distribution. A random variable, set, that has the normal distribution with expectation 0 and variance 1 is called standard normal distributed. The density function of a standard normal distributed set looks like this here. You see, it looks a little bit simpler um, than the density function of a random variable x that has the general normal distribution. The probability function or distribution function of a, a random number z that has the standard normal distribution looks like this here, where f0 is this density function here. So it's an integral again, but this time this function f0 looks like this here. OK, I have made a picture of this density function f0, which you can see here. So this is the picture of the density function f0, and you can see again this um, density function is symmetric, this time around 0, and um, the maximum of this curve is situated at the point 0. So here you have the general density function again for a random variable x that has the general normal distribution, and you see this general density function looks a, bit, a little bit more difficult. And the nice thing now is, instead of using this general density function with the mu's and sigmas, you can always use the easier density function of a random variable that is standard normal distributed. So, one more time, instead of using this here, you can also use that here, which looks a little bit easier. How is this possible? Because we can always transform a random variable x that has the normal distribution, the general normal distribution, to a new random variable z that has the standard normal distribution. How does that work? Let's assume we have a random variable x that has the general normal distribution with expectation u and variant sigma squared. Now we define a new random variable set the following way x minus mu divided by sigma. Now we can rewrite this the following way 1 divided by sigma times x plus minus mu divided by sigma. So this here on the right and this here on the left are the same thing. Now we will call this number here 1 divided by sigma a and that number here minus mu divided by sigma b. Now this random variable set is in the form ax plus b. And now we just have to use our rule we already know. If x has the normal distribution then ax plus b has the normal distribution too 
with this expectation and that variance. The next thing we have to do is to insert um, this number here for A and that number for B. So here, there and here. So we insert this number for A and that number for B. By doing so we will see that the new random variable set that is defined the following way has the standard normal distribution. So expectation 0 and variance 1. This follows immediately by using this rule here. When using this number here for A and that number for B. How does this help us calculating probabilities? So we know now that the random variable set that is defined the following way x minus mu divided by sigma has the standard normal distribution. We now want to calculate this probability here. The probability that the random variable x, which has the general normal distribution, is smaller or equal some small x, which is a real number. The first thing we do is to subtract mu on both sides here, which doesn't change anything with the probability. So we get the probability of x minus mu is smaller or equal x minus mu. And these two probabilities are the same, because we haven't changed anything. The next thing we do is to divide by sigma on both sides. So we get this here. And the probabilities are the same again, because we haven't changed anything here. Because we have done the operations on both sides. Now we already know what this, or we, we already know this random variable here. This random variable here on the left is the random variable set, which has a, no, a standard normal distribution. So we can also uh, write it this way here. So this here is the probability that z is smaller or equal small x minus mu divided by sigma. And z is a random variable that has the standard normal distribution. And this here is the probability function of a random variable that has the standard normal distribution at the point small x minus mu divided by sigma. So instead of calculating the probability on the left by using a more difficult density function of a random variable that has the general um, normal distribution, we can also calculate the probability on the right by using the standard normal distribution and its density function. So this here means an easier density function and an easier probability function. Furthermore, you only have to memorize the standard normal distribution and its density function not the normal distribution in general, which is a nice thing. Ok, I hope this video could show you how to transform a random variable that has the normal distribution to the standard normal distribution. And I also hope this video could show you how to calculate probabilities with that knowledge. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. It would really help me to keep creating videos.